Billy, do you want a battery? So, uh, for the first time, let me now unveil Xbox. So, you're gonna dig this. When you think about the OG Xbox, you think shooters and sports games. Some of the top selling games for the system were just that. But there's so many weird one-off franchises and mascots that tried to be the next Mario or Sonic. Goofy games that got forgotten in favor of Mr. Chief, Tom Selleck Splinter, and Car. I remember Car. So in order to bridge the gap between animation and gaming, I'm talking about all those weird failed mascots, games with strange character rosters, or just anything with a cool style and blessed with that exclusive logo. It's Juice and Jam time. <laughs> By the way, Blinks and Kung Fu Chaos are not in this video. I didn't have time to review them. You suck! Maybe for volume two. Dang! Hey there, guys and gals and all you sick weirdos in between. Are you ready to get? Now that's out of the way, let's meet today's contestants! What the fuck is this shit? Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> I guess they don't make skin tight rubber like they used to. Oh, Jesus God, Mary Mo, Larry Curly. It's whacked from 2002 among the first Xbox games with online multiplayer, taking place in an evil game show hosted by this stunning recreation of Bruce Campbell's doppelganger. You choose from one of seven characters that represents a deadly sin. There's a rabbit with its arms and legs cut off, Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, the Lost Oni Plays member, Bubbles the Trailer Park Boy, that blue guy from Rayman except Red, a coked out Powerpuff Girl played by Tara Strong, and the girl from Trip in the Rift played by Tara Strong. Ooh, what's this do? Uh... So how's the gameplay? It looks like a third-person shooter, but Whacked is a game show linking together six minigames slash modes that aren't all that original, like collecting the most amount of stars or King of the Hill. I like the one where you had to hold the trophy for the longest time, but other games have that. <laughs> My least favorite mode is dodgeball, it's just deathmatch with the worst weapon in the game. There are some fun chaotic ideas, like those random moments where every character is given homing missiles or baseball bats at the same time. Stuff like that is great. Everyone, Unfortunately, the controls feel too floaty. Even when you land a hit, it doesn't feel like you did. Also, a match like this shouldn't go on for eight minutes. Whacked feels like the mini games that should have been included in a bigger game. There really isn't much here to see, but at least there's over 40 minutes of cutscenes. <laughs> isn't she cute, folks? Say, who wants to see how a stun gun works? Similar to Twisted Metal, each of the characters has a fully animated ending. Not only are the characters based on the seven deadly sins, but the cutscenes reveal they were actually in hell the whole time. It's like baby's first creepypasta. <laughs> These were the good days when YouTube didn't exist, and you actually had to play the game to see cutscenes. No, we're not gonna make more cutscenes like Subspace Emissary, cause you all uploaded on YouTube. Stop it! Where did I leave my dignity? To further emulate a game show, there's 2D animated commercial breaks with a very familiar art style. Yeah, Dan Paladin, known for Alien Hominid and other behemoth games, did animations for Wacked. No, this wasn't a behemoth game as it was made by Presto Studios. Wacked was their final game before shutting down. Not because of this game failing, which it did. Presto made a few bestsellers like Myst 3 and were actually doing alright, but their specialty was PC gaming. Around that time, the PC market was dwindling while consoles were growing. The price to make games was also increasing, so Presto announced it'll be closing its doors before Wacked even released. They went out not due to bankruptcy, but because they anticipated working in this business would be too risky and wanted to quit while they were ahead. Upon termination, employees actually received severance packages and royalties from their sales, something that bigger studios just can't seem to do. Wacked doesn't have all that much to offer gameplay-wise, but at least the studio was pretty cool. You're out of special effects now. <laughs> 
There's Mario Party and Chill, and then there's Fusion Frenzy and Fuck. You gotta have a minigame collection to rep your console. Unlike the competition, Fusion Frenzy does away with the board game and cuts to a tournament of minigames. I never cared for the board game aspect of Mario Party, so I appreciate this. My favorite minigame is Bumper Ball. Four hamster balls ram into each other while the platform slowly falls apart. It's quite symbolic of the genital torture that was frequent during the War on Terror at the time. Yes, I know Mario Party 1 did this minigame, shush. I also enjoyed misguided missiles. Use the left stick to run around and right stick to remote control a bomb to chase the opponents. And my third favorite is Twisted System, where you either duck or jump over these bars as the track spirals down. <laughs> I'm sure those kids are fine. The match is almost over. I wouldn't say any of the mini games are truly bad, but when you go through tournament mode, you'll run through a lot of repetition. Having to collect objects and running to the goal happens far too often. I'm very confused at how the point system works during tournaments. They keep shifting between two digit scores to four digits, so I don't know if I'm winning or not. But I like how you can gamble your points on certain games. Not that it matters now with old servers being offline, but the game never had Xbox Live support. Though you can have a local friend press start and join even during a mini game. Now I'm playing this on the Xbox One S with improved video resolution, but even with a cleaner picture, certain mini games are too zoomed out to tell what's going on. I can't imagine playing this with an old tube TV back then. Selecting zones for this game. Play starts in the Coliseum. Choosing mini games. For a minigame collection, there's certainly a bit of world building. The camera could have easily have just shown this static camera shot and nothing more in the environment, but they often pan through a futuristic establishing shot. Each minigame is based somewhere within this city map, whether it be the mall, subway, or fast food joint. They really give a lot of personality to the world. With the funky music and characters named Dub, Zack, or Jet, it feels like Jet said Radio Future in the Rocket Power universe. Though, if you look at the concept art, they basically tried to rip off the gorillas. That was until Microsoft wanted the game to have a unique look, so we got this appealing redesign. <laughs> oh good, a family reunion. Fusion Frenzy was fun and sold a good 600,000 copies. There was a sequel on the 360, but that's the last we ever saw of the series for now. A new champion, Dog wins! Easy. What, what, what are you doing? Mr. Doll, a phenomenon known to just a few. That voodoo doll, he jumped out of some wacky magic brew. As I learned from this 2003 game titled Voodoo Vince, playing as a voodoo doll doesn't really do much outside a glorified screen finisher. It's really more of an aesthetic than a gameplay mechanic. When I think voodoo doll, I think taking control of others, but no. All you're really left with is a standard but solid puzzle solving 3D platformer. <laughs> Critics from back then saw this as just another collect em all with a snarky mascot. True, but you know what? Voodoo has some good personality to make up for its shortcomings. It's got a jazzy New Orleans setting and goofy characters everywhere. It kind of gives off a double fine LucasArts vibe. Oh, and his theme song is sung by Hancock's voice actor from Fallout 4. I don't play Fallout, but my friends want to fuck him. You'd think a guy made out of cloth could stay lit. The motivation for the plot has Vince's owner getting home invaded by night. Despite being a psychic, she didn't see this chair coming. Boom, bitch! Damn! That chick gets kidnapped by none other than the boogeyman from Billy and Mandy. So Vince has to secondhand self-harm everyone in his way to save her.
A lot of puzzles involve him committing suicide to kill others. Maybe that's why this game is rated T for teen. Even the cover art features him butt-fucking his own ass. This is a man who fears nothing. Phil Spencer, the vice president of Microsoft's gaming division, has stated that this is both his favorite game he's worked on and favorite game ever. That could factor into why Voodoo Vince got an HD remaster in 2017. Now with widescreen and improved textures, though minor sound glitches seem to pop up. The jingle when you die just cuts off abruptly every time. I don't know if that was in the original release or not. If you missed out on Voodoo Vince, now's the right time to give him a try. It ain't no Banjo-Kazooie, but it does have jazz music. Yeah, that was nice. Warms my heart, wherever it is. You are watching Nick Gas. Up next, the place where no game goes unplayed. Nick Arcade. Hey, you want to play Mario Kart on Xbox? Well, too bad, you get 2001's Mad Dash Racing, an on-foot kart racer similar to Sonic R, except with an even more outdated soundtrack. Moby, Fatboy Slim, The Crystal Method, KMFDM, my favorite. This was at a time when the CD format became standard to consoles. They had enough storage for full MP3s. Some games even advertised themselves with the music featured in the game. You know, I had no interest in Herb Sims in the City, but after seeing it was the special Black Eyed Peas edition, all I could say is hook me up, yo! <laughs> Now, I have a real love-hate relation with the gameplay. Mad Dash is one of my favorite Xbox games. It's sort of an extreme sports platformer where you must remember special abilities, tricks, and grinding. It's chaotic but fun once you understand the controls. On the other hand, because this was a launch title, it really feels like it needed a few more months of polish, especially the rubber banding AI. What does that word mean? Well, take for example Mario Kart. When you're in first place, the computer opponent speeds up. When you're in last, the opponent slows down. That's called rubber banding. Some people hate it, but I'm fine with it when I'm not constantly shifting between first and last place in a matter of seconds. Mad Dash Racing has some of the worst rubber banding ever. Mind you, I'm playing this on normal difficulty. It doesn't matter how far ahead you are, how many shortcuts you take, how many power-ups you use, it always feels like everyone is a step behind you. The AI is ruthless, while the track design is confusing. Too often it seems like I'm going the right way only to somehow go backwards. There's a real lack of flow to everything. It doesn't help when the message warning you that you're heading the wrong way wrongfully pops up at times. I'm following the track, dammit! Bad game design is one thing, but it's worse when physical harm is done to the player. Anytime you have to swim, climb up a wall, or use the monkey bars, you must rotate the analog stick to move forward. <laughs> Did these guys not play Mario Party? Here's some history. The first Mario Party game had several mini games that had you rotating the thumbstick. Most people used their palms and so many blisters were made. It got to a point where a civil lawsuit was made and Nintendo had to send out gloves to protect people's hands. Any future Mario Party games steered away from mini games that required rotating the thumbstick. Mostly. Mad Dash never got that memo. Ah! 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 Oh, my hands! My hands! As much as I bash this game, I do love the characters. Look at all these rejected Crash Bandicoot bosses. Did you know this game has only two voice actors listed in the credits? One of them is Billy West, who practically voices every character in this game. It's like a one-man Futurama reunion. All this waiting is ruining my overall screen presence. You gotta select me quick, kid. My spleen just exploded, and in five minutes, the poison will spread to my entire body. I can clear a room in five seconds. See? 
Though according to IMDb, there's possibly a third voice actor uncredited, Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario. Is this true? Oh, scusi, it must be the spaghetti americano. <laughs> spaghetti italiano, don't, don't do that for me. Yep, that's him. I wonder why he didn't want his name listed. Hey, die now, you crap <laughs> Now, each of the characters has a skill class. Gliders can glide, dashers can go turbo, and bashers crash through breakable walls. Although all the characters can glide sometimes, it's never clear why. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I have energy in my meter, why doesn't it work? Aha, now I'm going to you. But it's not all just racing. You got time trials, stunt mode, and cash mode, where you run through the track collecting dollar bills. How many bills are you supposed to collect? I don't know, but I lost. Thanks. It's too late. The chunks are in place. All I need to do now is align the encephalotron to focus their power into the dispersion vortex above. Fight the breeze. Now, there's actually a story to this game. Some wizard named Hex opens up a series of races and the winner gets his magic staff. The final race against Hex is where things get confusing. As in, why is there a path that suddenly leads to the wrong direction confusing? On the final lap, I make it to the top of this castle where I'm just running in a circle endlessly. Am I supposed to do something? And what do these bars on the side mean? Is that my health? I, I never had health in this game before. I didn't... Oh, no, I lost and got a message telling me to look for the bashable buttons to win. Oh, silly me, they tell me the mission objective after I lose. What a great idea. So I redo the final lap again. This time I try to find the bashable buttons. I see them up there, so I guess the only way up is this ramp. Oh, Never mind, I guess I need to play as a dasher type to run up there. Maybe I'm supposed to attack Hex by ramming into him. He's so hard to see in this dark map and I have zero control of the camera. You know what, I'm tired of this. I have no reason to play further besides unlocking more characters. Because this game was created by Crystal Dynamics, you can unlock Gex the Gecko. Look at that gameplay I took from YouTube. He looks so good in 240p. So how do you unlock Gex? According to GameStop.com, beat the game with all three main characters, complete all time stunts and cat. Ah, oh, fuck it, I don't care. I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. So, despite all that, Mad Dash Racing is still one of my favorite OG Xbox games. Very flawed, but still a solid 7 out of 10 for me. Sonic R meets SSX. I kind of like Sonic R, by the way. There was never a sequel, but a fan of mine pointed out one of the characters, Spanx, later got to be in another mascot game, Whiplash. But that's a video for another day. Here! Oh, I'm over here! Oh, here! Don't neglect me! Please don't neglect me! Look at me, said the first cloud. I'm a bunny. Look at me, said the second cloud. I'm a bunny. This game blows, said the third cloud. And that, children, is why it sucks to be a cloud. You can't eat them, Mom. Or can you? Oh.